learners of class 10 welcome to the wonderful world of english language classroom learners we have seen the first part of the second lesson of class 10 from your book the first flight nelson mandela's long walk to freedom learners in the first part we have in detail discussed how racism came into being and the struggle of people of South Africa to get liberated from the white racist rule. Fine, learners, you may wonder why I was giving so much of introduction, it is needed to be un uh, understand, you have to understand, fine. Now, let us now look into what Nelson Mandela says, writes in his autobiography, Long Walk to Freedom, it is a voluminous one, you can see it here. Also, the language Nelson Mandela uses for his, for conveying ideas to you effectively. This also tells us how we can learn to write very well, fine. Uh, before we move on to, let us understand the objectives of the lesson. Here are the objectives of the lesson learners. At the end of this lesson learners, you will be able to read the autobiographical text, Long Walk to Freedom by Nelson Mandela and identify the ideas, events and relate it with your own personal or your social experiences. Then having read the lesson, we will be able to respond to a variety of questions in familiar and unfamiliar context. So, I have set some questions for you, we will discuss that. Then we also will be able to use appropriately, appropriate words in context based on the given clues. Suppose you read a text of uh, let us say two pages, three pages story or an autobiography. Then some words you may not understand, you need not go to dictionary to consult meaning of every word, you, you do not want to because you are reading something. So, you know the meaning based on the clues given in the story. Come on learners, this is the objective. Learners, I gave you some sort of work, homework or school work, whatever work. I said, Google or uh, read something about Nelson Mandela, you may have got it, uh, just read it to yourself and share, with your, share it with your friends or we can even start a group to share uh, uh, your ideas with us. So, we will think about it later, but now learners, you will have to read the lesson, you must have read it, I asked you to read the lesson. So, I am going to present you to, to all of you the summary of the text, we call it subtext in order to understand what the text actually tells us, what Nelson Mandela is trying to tell us. Here is the summary of the text learners, it appears on your screen, summary of the text, long walk to freedom, Nelson Mandela. 10th May 1994 was the occasion of the inauguration of South Africa's first free non-racial democratic government after three centuries of white rule and more than 50 years of apartheid. The ceremony took place in sandstone amphitheater of the union buildings of Pretoria. Learners, if before 1991 and after 1994, many places of South Africa were changed. They were named after white people, racist leaders, then later it changed. Now also you must have noticed. Uh, in America, uh, many of the old slave owners, statues, places which were named after the slave lead, uh, owners were being removed by the Black Lives Movement. Uh, the government also came forward to remove some of the statues. There is a conflict there. You know that they, we do not want to see someone who oppressed being celebrated or honored. So, the, the Pretoria was the name in those uh, day, days, now its uh, names have been must have been changed. So, you may have to go to history to understand uh, how from in 90s things changed in South Africa. Nelson Mandela was accompanied by his daughter Zenoni. Learners, two weeks ago Zenoni passed away, She's quite, uh, she was quite young when Nelson Mandela was uh, uh, taken to the to assume office as the first black president, this Zenani was later 
uh, civil rights activists, then she died recently last month um, of uh, some illness. Mr. D. Clark was first shown as the second deputy president and Mr. Tabu Mibiki was shown in as first deputy president of South Africa. Nelson Mandela spoke after assuming office, today all of us do by our presence here confer glory and hope of newborn liberty. He says newborn liberty. Then two national anthems were sung, one vision of the whites, Nesoki Skelekel Africa and the other the black national anthem, Dai Stem. Now Nelson Mandela remembers the sacrifices of leaders who sacrificed their whole life for achieving freedom. Some of them were whites, some of them were blacks, some of them belong to uh, Islam, Christianity. The entire struggle like Indian freedom struggle was, was by the variety of diversified people, the people of. So here are some of the names he mentioned, Oliver Tambo, Walt, Walter Sisulu, Chief Lithuli, Yusuf Dadu, Bram Fisher, Robert Sabuke. So he says that I remember my friends who's, who, who soldered me, the, who stood shoulder to shoulder with me in my struggle. Now Nelson Mandela says, the military generals who would have arrested him not long ago now saluted him because the same Nelson Mandela was declared a terrorist, arrested, imprisoned for more than 26 years. So he says, the military generals who were there, who saluted me as president of South Africa would have arrested me not long ago, a few years ago. Mandela pours, pours out his heart. He says, no one is born hating another person because of the color of the skin or his background or his religion. People must learn to hate and if they can learn to hate, they can be taught to love. For love comes more naturally to human heart than its opposite. Learner, we humans have the tendency, instinct to love more than we do the opposite that is hate. Nelson Mandela further says, man's goodness is a flame that can be hidden but never extinguished. You know, every human being has goodness in him or her that can be hidden for some time, but it cannot be extinguished completely, it cannot be wiped out. Every man has twin obligations, Nelson Mandela says, learners, every man has twin obligations, obligations to his family, to his parents, to his wife and children and another obligation to his people, his community and his country. Learners, we should take it as a, as a kind of advice, suggestion, listen to us. We have two obligations in our life, one to our family, brothers, sisters, parents, wives, later you marry, but the other one is, what do I do to my community, my people around? So you should fulfill both the obligations. Then he says, he talks about his birth, childhood. I was born free and enjoyed my freedom as a child, but my childhood freedom ended in my house and in the neighborhood. How free was I? I thought that I was a free child, no, only in my house and in my neighborhood. As a young man, I realized, but then I slowly saw that not only was I not free, but my brothers and sisters were not free. Learners, notice the language he uses, but then I slowly saw that not only was I was not free, but my brothers and sisters were not free. Then. Nelson Mandela says, I joined African National Congress when the hunger for my freedom became the greater hunger for the freedom of my people. He says, I knew that the oppressor must be liberated just as surely as the oppressed. Then a man who takes away another man's freedom is prisoner of hatred. Sometimes we, we people, we say that we see people enjoy the power of oppressing others, but Nelson Mandela says, he is also suffering. It is not the people who are oppressed or suppressed, they are suffering. He also is suffering. He has to be liberated. I am not truly free if I am taking away someone else's freedom. Just as surely as I am not free 
when my freedom is taken from me. Nelson Mandela says, this is his words. So, he says, the oppressed and the oppressor alike are robbed of their humanity. So, people have to be, this is how uh, learners you need to understand why Indian constitution says that equality is the prime, the first and foremost objective of Indian constitution. You may have been speaking any language, you may belong to any caste, religion, creed, uh, you may be rich, poor, but you are equal. You have every right to compete with everybody. You can go to any school you want, you can, you can enjoy all the benefits of the government as per the law enacted, that means as per the constitution. Learners, this is the summary. I have tried to bring in the whole thing and it is a big lesson. I would request you please read, reread two, three times in order to understand it and discuss with your friends. So, learners, we have understood the text, summary has been said. Now, I am going to read out some statements. You will have to say whether the statements are true or false. This is to check the basic rudimentary comprehension of the text. So, here are the statements. One, long walk to freedom is an extract from Nelson Mandela's autobiography. Okay, let, learners, let me tell you, I am not going to say the answer. I am leaving to, leaving to you. You will have to decide. Two, Nelson Mandela describes the inauguration of his first black presidency after 300 years of white rule. True or false? 3. Apartheid is a discriminatory racial system. True or false? 4. Nelson Mandela was accompanied by his daughter Janani during the inauguration ceremony. True or false? Nelson Mandela was imprisoned for 28 years. True or false? 6. The white military generals arrested Nelson Mandela. True or false? 7. Only the black national anthem was sung at the inauguration of Nelson Mandela as the first black president of South Africa. True or false? 8. Mandela believes that the oppressor must be liberated as surely as the oppressed. True or false? 9. Mandela argues that the oppressed and the oppressor alike are robbed of their humanity. So, both need to be liberated, true or false. Fine learners, this is how we understand the text. Now, another task slightly deeper serious. This is of multiple choice questions learners. I am going to ask you some multiple choice questions, three or four options. Learners, let me tell you in some questions, more than one option is right. So, you will have to choose more than one. Okay, come on, MCQ multiple choice questions. Question 1, at the beginning of his speech, Nelson Mandela says, an extraordinary human disaster. What does he refer to? What is the extraordinary human disaster? A, the inhuman practice of apartheid. B, the white majority government. C, human conflicts in history. Learners, we will see the answers later. 2. Why were two national anthems sung that day? A. To accept all the people, whites, blacks, colored people are one and equal. B. The whites wanted their national anthem to be sung. C. The blacks wanted the national anthem to be sung. 3. Nelson Mandela believes that A. Both the oppressed and the oppressor need to be liberated. B. The oppressed needs to be liberated. C. Both the ruler and the ruled need to be liberated. D. The oppressor needs to be liberated. 4. The two obligations of a man are A to his family and to his people, B, to his service and the family, C, to his country and the world, D, to his own and his career. Question 5, 
Nelson Mandela's life is an illustration of a how an aggressive oppressor could be taught a lesson with love, b how an aggressive oppressor should be punished, c how the oppressed people win their freedom. Learners, we have come, we have come to the close of this lesson, Nelson Mandela's long walk to freedom. Let me suggest you some of the books to read, autobiographies, the, the autobiographies which changed the lives of hundreds of people, which shook the conscience of people. We all know father of our nation Mahatma Gandhi's autobiography, My Experiments with Truth, that is one, because here is a man who experimented with truth, nobody else says that I have been experimenting with truth. You, you may argue what is truth, what is not truth, but he has done it and he has recorded the true account of all his whims, fancies, likes, dislikes, struggle and how he stood. That is why he became the father of the nation. Number two, there is a biography, Indomitable Patel. It is on the life of Sardar Patel. Please read it. It is very moving. And you know that lots of writings by Jawaharlal Nehru. Learners, I suggest you to read Jawaharlal Nehru's uh, letters to Indra Priyadarsini. He, he, it is not autobiography, he talks about small, small events, science, uh, life, history. It will be uh, fine to learn, understand the world. So, I would suggest any child before the age of 15, 16, means before you complete class 10, you must read Jawaharlal Nehru's letters to Indra Priyadarsini to understand life. There are lots of uh, biographies. Uh, uh, and autobiographies. Autobiographies tell us how a life lived. It is not simply one person's life, the social, history, culture, everything. Fine. So, before we close and tell you the learning outcomes of this lesson, I would like to see some of the statements Nelson Mandela makes in his book, uh, Long Walk to Freedom, which is there in our textbook. Here are some, just to reflect on these words. No one is born hating another person because of the color of his skin or his background. Next statement, people must learn to hate and if they can learn to hate, they can be taught to love. For love comes more natural to the human heart than its opposite. Next statement, the oppressor must be liberated just as surely as the oppressed. The man who takes away another man's freedom is a prisoner of hatred. I am not saying anything on these uh, statements, learners. Reflect, try to translate into your language, discuss with your friends, then you also make some such statements about freedom. We speak here of the challenge of the dichotomies of war and peace, violence and non-violence, racism and human dignity, oppression and repression, and liberty and human rights, poverty and freedom from want. We stand here today as nothing more than a representatives of the millions of our people who dare to rise, rise up against a social system whose very essence is war, violence, 
racism, oppression, repression, and the impoverishment of the entire people. Thank you very much.